Hey guys, today's video is my long overdue, I think I see it every single time I film one of these, empties videos. My little bin, big bin here is literally filled right to the top, probably couldn't fit anything else in here. And I'm on the verge of finishing a lot of skincare, so it's definitely time to do this. Actually, both Samantha March and Miss Hope Elizabeth recently put up their empties and kind of gave me the kick in the butt I needed to film mine. Just kind of reminded me that, yeah, Emily, your basket's full too. If you're new here, hi, my name is Emily. If you enjoy beauty-related content, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And I'm just going to jump straight into this bin. In the past, I've tried my best to sort them into like hair care, skin care, makeup, and I mess it up every single time. So I'm just going to reach into this bin. First off, I'm going to start with this super beautiful candle. This was from Target and it is Bella by Illumi in Midnight Orchid. It was a soy based candle. I love the jar this was in. It also has like almost like polka dots kind of on it. I wonder if you can see from the inside. So when the candle is burning, it kind of casts this really beautiful light. I've already taken the wax out of this. You just pop it in the freezer for a few hours and it will literally fall right out. I'm going to clean up the like soot or whatever you call it around the edges and store some brushes in here because this jar is way too beautiful to throw away. This may be the first time in history I have both the corresponding shampoo and conditioner in my empties basket at once. I always go through shampoo way before conditioner. It was the case here, but this was just sitting in here for so long. I also have the conditioner. This is the Pantene Pro-V Sheer Volume Dream Care Shampoo and Conditioner. I really like these. I'm trying to move towards healthier, greener, beauty products or like hair and body products specifically not really makeup because uh just because <laughs> so i'm not going to repurchase these anytime soon if you saw my last beauty haul i picked up the love beauty planet something like that um vegan hair care system, shampoo and conditioner, and I've been really liking that for my hair. So I'm not gonna be re repurchasing these anytime soon, but if I run out and I'm in a pinch, I would pick up Pantene again. I really did like it. I have two body washes in here. This is the Ivory Clean and Simple Original Scent. Max used this for the most part. He's my oldest son and he has very sensitive, like, he has eczema patches and all of that on his skin so this type of body wash works best for him and I did use it every once in a while if I found I was using too many like fragrant body washes and stuff I could break out across my shoulders and my back and I would kind of revert back to this for a week or so until my back cleared up and then I would go back to using the ones that I like the smell of which is probably pretty dumb but I really do like this. It's super inexpensive as it is and it goes on sale all the time. The other one which is also super inexpensive is the Soft Soap Juicy Pomegranate and Mango Infusions Moisturizing Body Wash. I really like these. I'm not someone that likes to splurge on body wash. I've tried the L'Occitane Almond Oil and it really didn't blow my socks off. So I'd rather spend, what is this, like two or three dollars when it's on sale and it, it's a big bottle it lasts a long time I mean it gets you clean and it smells nice what more do you need out of a body wash I have a pack of makeup remover wipes these are the compliments brand and these are supposed to be like comparable to the Neutrogena ones they're like side by side on the shelf um, these <laughs> suck these burn my eyes so bad I ended up just finishing them off to take off swatches or like if I wasn't using my palette and I put foundation on my hand and stuff that's what I use this for occasionally I would use it to remove my lipstick and some of my face makeup but I had to stay like far away from my eyes <laughs> like I could only get like the very top of my forehead and down here on my cheek area I couldn't do my nose or anything that's how much these irritated my eyes 
so I won't be repurchasing these. I'm going to try my best to save the more exciting things for last. This is the Gillette Venus Melon Splash Shave Gel. I really liked this. I tend to get whatever shave gel is on sale. I'm not too picky because I find that none of them blow me away and I still get, like when I shave, I get those little dots on my legs. They're not bumpy, it's not razor burn, but like my legs look speckled and I don't really know why that is. I've never found anything that helps with that. So like I said, I just get whatever on sale. This Melon Splash did really smell awesome and I think it'd be great for summer. Oh, I have another body wash in here. This is the Le Petite Marcellier. Um, Mandarin and Lime Extra Gentle Body Wash. This was sent to me for free for review purposes from Influencer. I have another pack still in my shower. I do wish that they had sent, I don't even have one as an example, like you know how travel size shampoo and conditioners are in those like short little containers but it's still a proper bottle. I do wish they would have sent one of those instead of I think it was two or three foil packets and these were enough to do like two or three showers like they were quite big and they were quite full but I just wish it was in a bottle. Um, this does smell really nice. I didn't find the lather to be anything exciting. It didn't lather as much as I personally like but I did like this and if it were on sale and I spotted it in Walmart or something I would probably pick it up. It's just not my favorite thing. I went through a bag of the Shiseido, Shiseido Facial Cottons. I love these. I have been converted onto the Shiseido Facial Cotton bandwagon. I pick them up now every VIB sale. I've done it now twice. I'm working through my second bag. I cut these in half. So this comes with 165, yeah, 165 sheets. You cut them in half and that leaves you with what? 330 sheets, which lasts you a really long time. I use like a half a sheet to do my toner or acid tone, something like that to remove my eye makeup. And I'll use a full square if I'm using something like Bioderma to get as like my first cleanse to get the majority of my makeup off. So even with using, I don't know, I probably use two to three squares per day. It has so far lasted me like between each VIB sale and they're only $10 US and $12 Canadian to buy the package, which really isn't that expensive. But I mean, if you can save a few dollars and wait till the VIB sale, Maisel. Um, this is the deodorant I've used up. This is the Secret Invisible Outlast Extend Technology Completely Clean. It's not any kind of special scent. I don't really like my armpits to smell like mangoes or lavender or something. Like, not really baby powder either, but just something that, like, this just smells really clean, like a shower clean. And I liked it. Um, again, Deodorant's kind of one of those things I get on sale. I probably should be looking into healthier alternatives for that as well because I know aluminum is really bad for you to be constantly applying to your underarms, but I have not found a healthy deodorant that I like. I've tried um, La Vanilla is the one that stands out to me the most and they just don't work as good. Okay, I'm gonna start reaching in here more randomly again. This is the Sunday Riley Martian Mattifying Melting Water Gel Toner. There's still quite a bit left, like maybe a little less than half. I used this last summer and really enjoyed it. It's not something I would repurchase. It is great for oily and acne prone skin, which is kind of what I have. It's more combo than oily. And it has bentonite, marshmallow, and manuka in it. It was fine. I liked this in the mornings more than at night, but when I pulled it in, so I put it away for the winter. My skin gets quite dry and dehydrated in the winter months. Here in Canada, it gets very cold and dry. And I pulled this out this spring to try and use it, and I think it's gone off because 
the next day I had all those little white bumps on my skin so I think this went bad which means the shelf life really isn't that long on it it says 12 months and that's probably one of those products that is really strict to that time frame I generally don't follow those little jar suggestions but in this case um, I think it definitely is pretty accurate since it was about a year old a little over a year old and it has definitely gone bad this is the Aveeno positively radiant toner I really liked this in the mornings it was kind of hydrated and did give you a little bit of a like healthy glow you definitely weren't dewy or luminous it didn't have shimmer or anything in it but it was it says gently refreshes skin without causing tightness and is alcohol free which is very important to me and this has soy extract in it and I didn't find that it broke me out which is strange since a lot of soy based skincare products break me out so bad like the fresh soy um, soy face cleanser that broke me out terribly if I eat soy ice cream it breaks me out so bad but maybe it's pretty down on pretty far down on the ingredients list no it's fourth water butylene glycol peg four and peg 16 soy sterile don't know what that means but it's the fourth ingredient so whatever it didn't break me out I did like it probably won't repurchase it like it wasn't anything mind-blowing but it was really nice while I had it I've gone through a fragrance this is the fruit and passion cherry eau de toilette you can buy this at Walmart it was just a really light fruity scent and I really did like this um, I wouldn't really call it an eau de toilette it's more like a body spray because it doesn't last that long but um, I would consider repurchasing it I, in the spring and summer I do kind of like that lighter airier scent and that was kind of a mix between that and super fruity like it was a well curated fragrance in my opinion I have a South Main under eye gel reduces puffiness reduces dark circles moisturizes the eye area I'm just not someone that really loves to have eye masks on this we got in BoxyCharm a few months ago. The first time I used one of these, this is my second one. I don't know where the other one went. It burned my under eye. Not to the point where it was super painful and I felt like taking them off, but there's definitely like some heat and irritation happening under my eyes and you're supposed to leave these on for 30 minutes. And I didn't find it did anything spectacular for my under eyes. I still had all my fine lines, still had my dark circles, which an eye mask cannot cure your dark circles no matter what they say on the package. That is hereditary and related to dehydration as well. So I'm just gonna put that out there. Um, I would not purchase those. This is the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Gel. There's some left like it's settled it was laying down like this this is really great for oily skin I would consider repurchasing this Clinique is not cruelty free I keep mentioning like cruelty free things on my channel because I'm trying to make more conscious purchases but I'm not making the claim that my channel is going in the cruelty free direction my skincare is very important to me because I do have combo acne prone skin I break out pretty easily and if I cannot find a cruelty free alternative that works for my skin, I will revert back to my old favorites. So if I cannot find a cruelty free moisturizer that works well for me, and I'm not saying there isn't any in the world, but I'm also not going to purchase 15 to find out, uh, I will repurchase this. It was really great for my skin and I especially like that in the summer. I have five mascaras here. It must be like four months or so since I filmed one of these. I have the Maybelline The Colossal Big Shot Volume Express. Whoops. I really do like this one. It's not my all-time favorite. I do like the wand. It is a natural bristle wand and it's like tapered and has longer bristles on one side. Really did like this but it's time for this to go. The one I dropped is the Makeup Forever Excessive Lash. I pulled this out today actually from my 
makeup drawer of shame slash my to be tested and this is completely dried out. That's how bad, this is why I'm on a no buy slash low buy. I'm gonna buy things if I need it. Like if I completely run out of everything, I will purchase a new one obviously. But this sat in my drawer for almost a year and I never got to it, I never opened it, I never used it once, and now it's dried out and I can't use it ever again. So that's really wasteful. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Feline Mascara. I really did like this one as well. This was more of a like lengthening and defining mascara. It has a plastic brush on it, um, which isn't my favorite, but I really did enjoy this mascara. This is the Clinique High Impact Mascara, another deluxe size sample. I really liked this. I had never tried a Clinique mascara before this one. It has a really basic wand, but my lashes always looked great whenever I used this, but it's getting pretty dried out now. And same with this one, this is the Tarte Tartist Lash Paint. And I liked this one as well. Not the biggest fan of the brush. It is very spiky and pokey and you can get yourself in the eyeball um, but it made your lashes look great so sorry if I'm flying through these super fast but I'm going to visit my dad today and I need to hurry it up this is the nip and fab exfoli exfoliate I have was that soot from the candle on my hands <laughs> glycolic fix serum someone told me that this was a dupe for the Sunday Riley Good Jeans Serum. It is definitely not, not even close. I would not repurchase this. This left my face feeling quite sticky. I used this as my serum step and applying a moisturizer on top. So it really, I mean, didn't matter too much, but um, I didn't find this did a whole lot of anything. It's supposed to be like resurfacing. That's what glycolic acid is good for, but I didn't find it did a good job of that. I'm really sad about this. Um, this is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Plumper Brow Gel Mascara. This is my favorite brow gel. There's still a bit of product in here. I use this almost every day, so I'm not sure how I didn't run out of this, but oh my god. It smells... I can't even put my finger on what this smells like. Very chemically, it definitely has gone bad. This is something that I think I am going to repurchase even though it is from L'Oreal. I do not have a brow gel I like as much as this and all the research I've done there is not a cruelty free dupe for this. There's dupes that are not cruelty free but then I might as well buy the one that I love that I know I love. This my eyebrow hairs are like very long and unruly. This does have fibers in it, but also has amazing hold. I like the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel just for hold that does not have fibers in it and that is cruelty free. My camera stopped recording. This gives you both a tint, the fibers, and great hold. And because of that, this is my favorite. If I'm looking for that more like fluffy bushy eyebrow look this is the brow gel I was reaching for if you know of a good brow mascara brow gel that ha is both tinted has the fibers and amazing hold and is cruelty free definitely let me know I'd be so inclined to pick that up but if not this will be getting repurchased this is a sample size of the Dr. Brandt Microdermabrasion. This is a very intense exfoliating, kind of like a treatment because you wet your face, you apply this and you work it in for, I think it's 30 seconds to a minute. Oh, gently massage for one to two minutes and then you leave it on your skin for a little bit and it kind of works as both a physical exfoliant but it's not anything harsh like what is it that people use like ground avocado pits and um or peach pits or walnuts like those are tearing up your skin do not use those um this has just small beads and then it has a bit of a chemical exfoliant as well and you can kind of feel it tingling on your skin i already have the full size of this it came in a boxy charm quite a while ago but i used this one first but I really do like it. I can only use it once every week or two weeks. Like it's very intense. 
This is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Oil Free Gel Cream Fresh Hydration for Normal to Oily Skin. This was nice. It didn't blow me away. I won't repurchase like the full size. It was just okay. This is the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Deep Conditioning Mask. I already have another sample of this, but it's a bigger one. I think it's I don't know if it's a deluxe size sample or if it's like the travel size that they actually do sell on Sephora, but this is great. I have quite damaged ends. My hair is very, very long. It's down to my waist now and I like to keep my ends hydrated, but I have very flat and oily hair like up at the top. So I can't even take normal conditioner up there. So I definitely wouldn't take this up there. It smells really good and I've been loving Briogeo products. They're a really clean and healthy hair care brand. They are a little bit more pricey though. This is the Nicole by OPI Quick Dry Top Coat. This got super goopy in here. It still worked but it would make my top coat so thick on my nails that I literally couldn't touch anything for like two hours. Like it would not dry. That's how like thick it got. So I definitely need to pick something else up. I haven't yet and honestly my nails haven't chipped any more than usual with not having a top coat in my collection right now. So I might just wait it out. Kathleen Lights keeps hinting that they're so close to having a base coat and a top coat and Kale Polish is becoming one of my favorite nail polish brands. I have quite a few of her polishes now. So I don't know if I should wait for that or just buy something else. I mean, I'm doing fine without any at all. So I only have three more products left. I know this video is getting pretty long and I'm so sorry about that. A lot of my videos on my channel lately have been really long. This is the Lise Wattier Hydro Force Hydro Protective Gel Cream with Gaspé Algae Extract. Um, this was nice as well um, because I have combo to oily skin in the summer months and like dehydrated, normal to dry in the winter. I like using like gel based moisturizers in the warmer months and this was nice. Um, Lee Swatier is, I don't know if she's, if it's just sold in Canada, you might be able to buy Lee Swatier, um, online but it's a Canadian brand it's sold in shoppers and maybe like Lawton's and stuff in Canada Lawton's is Atlantic Canadian I don't think that's across Canada anyways it was really nice but this is going to be pretty pricey and I'm not sure if Lee Swatier is cruelty free I might actually check that out because I liked it probably just as much as the Clinique, so I'm going to look that up and figure that out. This is the Dior Capture Total Dream Skin. This, it says global age-defying skincare, perfect skin creator. This is a, has a t pink tint to it and I would not repurchase this. It didn't really do anything. It's one of those kind of hybrids between skincare and makeup. Like it's kind of meant to use as a primer. It was pretty brightening. I would mostly use this on no makeup days because the tint to it kind of gave you that healthy look and evened out your skin tone a little bit. But Dior is incredibly expensive so definitely won't repurchase that. This is the 111 or 111 skin space defense bright eye lift gel I got this in an ipsy quite a while ago and I'm just getting to it I looked up the retail value of this and to buy the full size it's like hundreds of dollars I'll put the price on the screen now 100% would not repurchase this <laughs> I didn't even like it that much. It was pretty sticky under the eyes and I like to take my eye cream onto my lid and my brow bone as well because I don't take moisturizer up there and it seems silly to me to just skip that skin all together and my eyelids would like stick in my crease when I use this. You wanna come say hi? Don't touch the camera. Oh my gosh. Well, I wanted to say hi and toppled over my camera. My mirror that I have back there basically destroyed the whole place. So. 
Anyways, I'm not going to repurchase this. It was sticky. I didn't find it all that hydrating. I much prefer the Algenist Complete Eye Renewal Balm. That's $80 Canadian, so that needs to be a very special occasion when I buy that. And right now I'm using the Kiehl's Midnight Recovery something or other, and I do like that better than this. So definitely not worth the super steep price tag. I feel like I'm crooked now that I've reset my camera up. Anyways, that was everything for my empties. I'm going to try and maybe do these every two months or so instead of every three to four, maybe even more months since the last time I did one. Or do you want me to just wait until the spin is full again? But that means the videos are going to be quite a lot longer like this one was. That was everything. I will have everything linked below and I put an asterisk um, next to the products that I would consider repurchasing or would recommend. Um, I can recommend things and not necessarily be repurchasing them for myself. If you enjoy empties videos, please do give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Yay. See your mommy in there, yeah! Don't touch! Don't touch! Oh! Can you come say, say hi? I'm being bad and trying to topple over the camera. Let me take a thumbnail. You want to be in my thumbnail? Yes? <laughs>